The next process here for the 12 volt wiring is we have all of the bus bar and everything like that that you saw, but now we need to take all, we need to, you know, power all of the lights and all the little, little things, right? Inverter, remote switch, mounted. This spaghetti mess here is just because all the wires are going to be tied up at one point. Pop, push, push it on, you're good. And all of the necessary wiring in the back, which is just time consuming, that's all. It's just time consuming. It's not completed, but this is all drilled through here and then comes out on the other side. I'm going to put a little false wall. And all of those wires you just saw come out right here. There's a switch panel. Got that all wired up. So there you go, got that all done. I don't know how I'm going to get in the back side of this, but... Holy macaroni! I'm not going to pop this all the way in, but... There you go. Light switches for the bunk, USBs for the bunk. Here's a shot of all the completed wiring before the wall, false wall was installed in the closet there. So I've got this 12 volt plug, cigarette lighter style, that I want to put in the camper just, just so I have it really. I mean it wasn't expensive to buy it, it's a Blue C brand which is a good brand. I want to put it in the, well it's just the easiest place for the battery compartment area. I'm going to put it right there in the, the nook, the breakfast nook area. So that's the back side of the fridge is where that hole is. And you can see I got electrical coming up from the bottom there. It's real easy access. That's why I decided to put it there. So here I'm going to be splicing this wire into this guy. So there'll be you know, three wires involved here. This is all 16 gauge. The insulation is GXL. I'll show you how I do it. So these two wires are going to be twisted together like this and this wire is going to be like this and they're going to get connected. You want to put the shrink tubing on the single side. And then this trim is done. We can put the USB plug centered in between there so we know where to put it. So this is what came up with. It barely touches it. It'll be fine. We have the trailer wiring done as far as temporarily. So right now, this is the National Lampoon's Christmas vacation situation here where we got all the wiring done and we have a battery set up over there. I got every, I just got wires twisted together. This is gonna be, this is either gonna go really well and everything's gonna work or it's not gonna work at all or we're gonna smoke out the, burn them off. So 
I got an amp meter over here just to kind of so show the amperage that's that's going on and you guys will be able to see it from the back and you'll know if it works and this is like i'm kind of nervous i'm not gonna lie because i got days of work into this this is like the lampoons where you take the plugs like this and freaking <laughs> so all right on three one two three did it work five amps cool worked nice we did something right Oh, cool! Tail lights work. Let's do a walk around. Come on over. We got the clearance lamps, five up top. We got one up, with, you know, it's gonna be up here, but we got them hanging. Got one here, we got one lower one, and then we got an amber up at midship and forward. This will be one of the blinkers. And then this one's going to be the other side. One more thing, and we're good. Four amps. Reverse lights. Nice. Oh, that's so cool. So I got all my grounds here, and then I got my hots. You know, I just kind of keeping it separate. I mean, they're all mixed, but these are unfused right here. Unfused. Dangerous. So I want it as protected as I can with loom, and that's what I'm going to do. Well, now that I think about it, it's not all unfused, but there are some unfused wires in this bundle. Fuse panels over here. Look, here's your spaghetti mess. This is what everything looks like right there. I think you should. It's in there. It's not going to be in there for long. What are you doing? We have the completed DC electrical system in the truck camper. And that includes the trailer lights, which is its own circuit. You've seen the old video for the AC power. That's completed. Now the DC power is done. So we're going to do an overview. Here is the electrical system. So you can reference other videos on the battery bank, the vent hood, all that are on other videos on my channel. So this is the bus bar distribution power center, we'll call it. Also reference older videos on the assembly um, in the beginning stages of this. This is the negative bus bar. This is the positive bus bar. Reference other videos. You can get another shot of it coming in. And then it, it just used to be a spaghetti mess here, um, but I, tidied it up and loomed it. Usually you want your fuses very close to your power source where, well in this case I couldn't fit them. So we have a, we jump over here, which this will all get tied up to the, um, when the countertop, the bottom of the counter. And then they all come down into, most of them come down into this area here. And then these are the main, this is the main fuse. Um, these are the two fuse panels that I have for the DC side. So I have them um, numbered here, one through five. I gotta get fuses still, these are just temporary. So these are all the inputs to the DC size of these fuse blocks. And then these are the outputs and they all go to, the, this one's the fridge. I have a spreadsheet of how many, how much power is going through each circuit. Then they all go to wherever they need to go. Uh, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's, I'm not going to go through every circuit here, but for example, a simple one, here's the simplest circuit, is this 12 volt plug, right? So that's like a car cigarette lighter. So that one is, that is circuit three. So we're going to go to circuit three, it goes through fuse, so then this is all 12 gauge wire, goes up, and then I'm going to go on the other side. So now you're on the back side, and it comes up from there and you have your positive and your negative going into power receptacle here. That's as simple as it gets. That ground will run back down through the loom and go to your go to the ground side and the positive came off the hot. Just, just to give you an idea, this is how busy it gets up in the roof because all the electric. Here's a shot of the back of the camper. These are the switches that when you walk in, they power the lights. 
and then this will be for the porch light out in the back. And just to give you an idea of what's going on here, um, this is going to be the leads for the porch light, and they're all just spade connectors. And what I did was I bent the tabs so that it'll be flush when when um put the aluminum on. So I had to bend them, and they're double pull switches. I just cut them because I I got these for a really good deal. So that's why that looks like that. So these are two USB uh, ports right there next to your receptacles. For all of the lighting, I used porch lights actually, they're considered. Um, they are on an angle a little bit, but you know what, it's fine. They were $2 I think, and I got LED bulbs for them. And we'll see how they work. Pull a lot less amps, and I have all three of these. Then I have this light and this light tied to the kitchen lighting, which is on this switch. And then this switch here is for the water pump. The vent hood is also um, has electric run to it. That's because I have a light in there, which I actually converted into uh, LED, which I'm pretty sure you saw that on another video. And then we have the vent fan. And I tried to do my best to keep everything, you know, clean it up the best I could with uh, zip ties and electrical tape and looming to make it make it neat. This uh, bundle of wires here is actually for the trailer wiring, all the lights, like for when it's hooked up to the truck, brake lights, all that. And that's its own little wiring harness, comes out right there. And it's its own circuit. All of these circuits, the AC circuit, the DC circuit, and the trailer light circuit are completely independent of each other. Some appliances actually, like if like the water heater and the fridges and some RVs, they actually combine the grounds of the AC and the DC side. I opted to not do that and keep everything separate because I just didn't want to mix AC and DC. I researched it a decent amount and couldn't find a good reason uh, to have them combined. Let me know if you have more information on that in the comments, but as of now, everything's separate. It makes sense in my head to keep everything separate and that's the way it is and everything's working. So we're gonna roll with that. Now with the, the wire chase looks pretty good. Now the a ABS piping, it's right there. It's all painted green now, don't even know. The only thing left to do that I have is the two 14 gauge leads here. Um, these are connectors for the vent fan, power vent fan when that gets installed, but it's ready, it's right there. It's, they're hot, they're ready to go. I know some people are gonna ask uh, specifics on the electrical system. I left a lot of details out. Um, just some rules of thumb. I use 16 gauge, 14 gauge, and 12 gauge mainly for every single circuit, every 12 volt circuit uh, that you saw on the small spade fuse circuits. Um, <clears throat> you can get away with 16 gauge on a lot of stuff. It all depends. You got to look that stuff up. I'm not going to tell you what, you know, use 12 gauge everywhere and you're good. No, don't, you got to research it yourself. Um, there, you know, there's voltage drop when you start getting long 60, 100 foot um, circuit lengths from starting power all the way back to ground. Uh, this is a v this is not a, a car or a truck or a trailer with metal, so I can't just ground to the frame. That doesn't that doesn't work on a wooden item. So every ground has to get run all the way back to the ground, or every ground yeah has to get run all the way back to the uh, bus bar. So there's a full run, uh, double the run. So your wire your circuit lengths can get long quick. And that's something to keep in mind. So there you have it, that's most of the uh, info on this one. I don't wanna go into details, like I said, on the circuits individually or more details in the electrical system for wire gauge size, fuse size, all of that because it gets really intricate and every situation is depends on other factors. So some good um, tools to use is bluec.com. Uh, Blue C is a marine um, electrical and for campers, but mainly marine electrical 
um, company and they have a good website, but there's a wire circuit wizard, they call it, on the Blue Seas website, and that's a pretty good reference. Reference that, that will get you a very, very good start. Pretty much, it'll get you what you need on wire gauge size, fuse sizes, they, they have it all in there. It's just finding the, the information. That's an awesome website, awesome resource. Don't be intimidated by it. You can do it. Just be careful doing it because there is a danger. It can cause a fire. Like, it can happen. You put too small a gauge of wire and you throw 20 amps at it, it's burning, the, burning it up. <laughs> so, just keep that in mind. That's it. You know, we got, we got power. We got power. Everything works. As I turn the switch on and nothing works. Okay. So there's your update. Let's keep on rolling. See you next time. Right, Tank? What is that? It's not food.